Hey, all cinephile Mike here with day 41 of award season review season two. And we are wrapping up the rest of the globe's mostly week. <laughs> now, for some of you who have been watching, he said that today I was going to review my number one film of 2023, but I'm holding off on that for a moment. There was a shift with good reason. It's coming. Don't worry. I'm saving it for later. So apologies for those that were really looking forward to that one. It is coming soon. Now, before I jump into the film that is going to wrap up this series, let me say congrats to all of the Critics' Choice winners last night. I see that a Barbenheimer battle for the technical awards at the Oscars this year is going to happen as these two films split the awards last night. Performance-wise, you know, for the acting awards, a lot of repeats from the Globe. So does that mean that these are the performers that have the Oscars locked up? Well, we get the nominations next week, so it will be interesting to see. But today is about wrapping up the majority of the films that were nominated for the Globes last week. And today is Vertical's production, She Came to Me, written and directed by Rebecca Miller. Now, She Came to Me, when it was in the box office, had a total take of $963,260, with $733,978 coming from the domestic box office and $229,282 from the international box office. Now, award season-wise, this film was nominated for last week's Golden Globes in the Best Original Song category for the end credit song and a reference to one of the lines delivered by the character in the film. The song was Addicted to Romance, written by Bruce Springsteen and Patty Sialfa, and it was performed by Springsteen. Now, aside from that, it has been quiet for this film during award season, and this song was not on the Oscar shortlist, so the awards journey may come to an end, so maybe fitting that we're ending this week's theme with it. So She Came to Me is a very unique approach to the romantic comedy that's going to focus on two couples. One is Stephen and Patricia, played by Peter Dinklage and Anne Hathaway, respectively. Now, Stephen is an opera composer with writer's block, and Patricia is a cleanliness-obsessed, very religious psychologist. Now, their marriage, to say the least, is very unique. There is a respect and a love, but both seem to want something more. Now, Stephen Something More comes in the form of tugboat captain Katrina, played by Marissa Tomei. Now, this love triangle will play out in some interesting ways <laughs> um, between the stories of opera and love of the sea and the boats and entertaining <laughs> imagery abounds. And the other couple in this film is the young couple of Julian and Teresa, played by Evan A. Ellison and Harlow Jane, respectively. Now, this high school couple will deal with complications from Teresa's adoptive and legally obsessive stepfather, Trey, played by Brian Darcy James. Now, involving the fun romantic comedy tropes that come to these films are the interconnectedness of these couples. So how are they connected? Well, Julian is Patricia's son from a first marriage, and Teresa's mother, Magdalena, played by Joanna Kulig, is the cleaning lady that works for Patricia and Stephen in cleaning their home. And a few slightly bizarre twists of fate will play out, and we will see the journeys that these two couples go on. And with it being a romantic comedy, there are some happy endings. However, the way they play out, not necessarily of the norm. So. While there is no other potential awards chances for this film right now, because most of the nominations are announced and its Oscar chances seem likely, I do want to say that this was a refreshing take on the romantic comedy, and the cast is willing and able. Now, Tomei really brings out some of the unhinged humor that worked so well for her in Crazy Stupid Love, and really provides a nice counterpoint to Dinklage's understated Stephen. While experiencing his writer's block, he delivers dialogue with a deadpan that matches uh, his wife's alpha personality in Anne Hathaway's Patricia. The film is enjoyable, but unfortunately, Miller stumbles upon trying to cram too much plot into one film. You know, the love triangle dynamic with Dinklage, Hathaway, and Tomei, that's interesting enough, and the whole film could have supported how that played out. But by, you know, adding in the element of Julian and Teresa and her parents and that other love plot, 
while both you know subplots will reach an ultimate conclusion, there are a few loose ends hanging, and you wonder if we didn't get a little gypped in the story that we were trying to hear on both ends. I mean, the film never drags, but you almost feel that it rushes to the end, and that's a disservice given what Miller was trying to accomplish. However, the cast does escalate this script and our game to have a good time. Separately, I do want to point out, there are two operas that are staged based on Stephen's experience that are quite entertaining to watch, especially how within the world of the film we get to see how art imitates the life of the characters. So ultimately, She Came to Me is a three-star film. Some fun moments and good performances in a slightly rushed film set against, I mean, who doesn't love a film set in New York? There was more, you know, needed for the core love triangle. However, you know, while I could have used more, it is still worth a watch. I do recommend it. If you are interested in catching She Came to Me, it is available to rent on all digital platforms. As of this posting, there is no streaming information to share. All right. So that wraps up the rest of the Globes, mostly week. <laughs> Next week, in keeping with wrap-ups, I will be engaging in the rest of the Critics' Choice, mostly week, <laughs> as I get to some of the other films in contention that may not have won the awards last night, thank you, Barbenheimer, but are some films that are worth seeing, and they will be coming up, including, and this is where in the set I will include my number one of 2023. All right. Thank you for joining me here today. If you like what you heard, you can follow me, Cinephile Mike, on all social media platforms. You can compare movie reviews with me on Letterboxd. Please subscribe and like the channel if you like what you're hearing and spread the word. Get everyone on board to enjoy all the cinematic goodness. Until then, this is Cinephile Mike saying take a break and watch something new.